Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dustin YDU, and this is more dating advice. I haven't done dating advice in a very long time, and let me put it this way. I had hair. I had hair at the time. Can you stand that? But I've actually been getting some people, mostly friends, um, asking if I should do more dating advice. And I was thinking about it for a long time, and there was one person in particular, and I won't name names, but... I was listening to them on social media. I'm not going to say what, but they're a good-looking person. They are popular. They are successful, and their fit is a freaking fiddle. And they're, they clam up when, they, when it comes to talking to people. Not just women, because he's straight, but people in general. Some people you don't know just clam up. And that's why I'm making this video, because all I can think of is how much I used to be like that. It's also funny that I used to do dating advice videos when I was just as socially awkward. I was incredibly socially awkward. I had no business making dating advice videos. The only reason I was making dating advice videos it was from observing friends of mine who were in relationships and they were dating and some of them were cheating on their girls and some of their girls were cheating on them. It was so much information. I didn't need to be in any relationship of my own to gather information. But yes, I was incredibly socially awkward. I would fumble at my words. I would try to make jokes and the jokes I would come up with, you've done it. Everybody's done it. You know, you try to say something funny and then you say it and you're like, that was the stupidest thing I could have said. Now everybody hates me. It got to the point where people thought I was downright creepy. And if it was a woman I was interested in, oh, you want to talk about socially awkward. Oh no, I got sweaty because for some reason just talking to them made suddenly the whole room was like, why is it so hot in here? Why am I sweaty? It's winter. It's cold in here. Why am I sweating and overheating and fumbling at my words and... You know what? I, I can see why people thought I was creepy. Oh. I can sit normally now. My cat was in my chair. She finally got up. I was sitting on the edge of my seat because she wouldn't get up, and I'm not that type of guy to get out, move, you know? I mean, some of my jokes would come out downright offensive, okay? I don't even want to give you an example because I remember trying to make a joke, and whew, yeah, I'm never repeating that. I'm never repeating that. <laughs> I mean, that was literally the opposite of my intentions. I wanted the person to like me, to think that I was a good person, that I was funny. Instead, they thought I was weird and creepy and very offensive. <laughs> but I think everybody can relate, at least in some point in their life, one time or another, or like me, half my life. You were like that. And yes, I was that guy. I would go home afterwards, some sort of social outing or something, and I would look at myself in the mirror and yell at myself. It's like, why are you like this? You see that meme everywhere of a guy pointing at a mirror going, why are you like this? So I rarely, very rarely had any kind of fling, let alone a girlfriend, let alone someone to sleep with. I was on a dry spell for a long, you know, I'm not going to get into that right now. However, all that being said, I do have to point out that my dating advice from way back then was still valid. It may not have been my own experiences, but it was from uh, observing, and I know a lot of people agreed with me. Although I can't exactly remember what I used to talk about, but I remember people agreeing with me. But now, I'm a completely different person. I mean 100% different. Like, it doesn't even feel like me from back then. Almost like it was a past life. It doesn't feel like I'm the same person. So this video... <laughs> is to is to teach people, hopefully help them at least, on how to talk to anybody. Not necess not just like the person that you're interested in, but anybody. Because once you're down with talking to absolutely anybody, talking to the person you might have a crush on gets that much easier. Yeah, you might have a harder time because that's the person you're interested in, but your confidence would be so much better once you get to that point. So, how did I go from being the awkward, the quiet, the creepy, the freaking just socially awkward altogether person to now a person who can talk to anybody and flirt with anyone? Ow, my elbow! That's staying in the video because 
I said all I wanted to say. I'm not repeating it. So it's kind of a story, and I hope you bear with me because every detail is important at least as far as I'm concerned. But this is what made my life turn around like a full 180. 180? 180? Turn around a full 180. Why doesn't that sound right? Turn around 180. Why doesn't that sound right? Yeah, I was right, okay, anyway. So yes, a full 180 turnaround. I think it's, the wording is a complete 180. That sounds better, a complete 180 turnaround. Sorry about that, I just got a phone call and now I have no idea where I was. I wrote myself notes so I can see where the hell I was. Okay, 180, I remember, I remember the 180 thing. All right. Oh, here we go. Okay, so I'll start off by telling you this story with a buddy of mine, okay? We are not friends anymore, but that's... A long story of itself. Trust me, I'm not opening that can of worms. But even though we're not friends anymore, there is something huge I have to give him. And by that, I mean credit. He helped me turn my life around completely. He was the opposite of me, okay? He was the opposite of me. He brought a girl home often. And I'm talking three times a week, a different girl, and they're all gorgeous, okay? Now, mind you, I was I didn't really want to be the guy to sleep around, and I haven't been, but the fact that he could baffled me, especially since I was on that dry spell that I'm still not going to talk about. But yeah, he was. He could talk to anybody, anybody. He does, it doesn't matter if he never, if he never met them before. It doesn't matter. They, he could talk to literally anyone just walking through the store walking through the mall going to a club going to a bar doesn't matter hey buddy you exist we're suddenly best friends he could do that and it blew my mind how right everybody knows a person like that well i had a best friend who was like that and he could dance no i'm still mad at him about that he can dance i can't dance I dance like a white boy. I tried to learn how to dance. Now I dance like a goofier white boy. I just can't dance. If I get drunk, I'll dance anyway. Um, so you better be drunk too or you're going to find that too funny to enjoy yourself. <laughs> but my whole life being friends with this guy, I'm like, how? How are you so witty? How are you so friendly? How can you talk to anybody? And how do you flirt so well to bring anybody home? How? And why can't I do any of that? Sound familiar? No? That's not you? Well, then you need to leave the video. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Love your face. So before that digression, uh, me and my buddy, we used to go to the casino often. There's a casino, it's like 20 minutes away, and they had amazing dance clubs. So we didn't really go there to gamble. I mean, sometimes we went to gamble, but it was mostly for the dance clubs, because I told you, when I get drunk, I like to dance. And we'd go there every Friday and Saturday night, usually, not always, uh, but at least once a week. And after so often of going to the same place every week, eventually you start seeing regulars. And this is the casino. Casinos are glamorous. There's lights everywhere. There's people playing slot machines in the background. You hear the ding, 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 ding. And it's such a magical place. But once you start finding regulars, you start talking to them. And you're like, hey, good seeing you. You're back every weekend. My name's Dustin. Who are you? Mike, nice meeting you. I just threw that name out. But my point is, once you start seeing regulars, right, it gets a little bit easier. I am recording, right? Yes. It gets a little bit easier to talk to people because you didn't know these people before, and suddenly you're regulars. You see them all the time. You talk to them all the time. Confidence goes up just a little bit. Not enough to really make an impact on your life, but it does help a little bit, knowing that you didn't know these people, and now you can consider them at least... You can consider them friends, I guess, but acquaintances at the very least. 
I mean, this was all good and fun, however, you know, going to the casino, drinking, seeing the same people, having fun. It didn't change who I was as a person, though. I was still that socially awkward person. Once I got to know you very well and we became friends, I'm suddenly not so weird and creepy because I'm not trying too hard, which is the majority of the people's problems when they're trying to meet someone. They try too hard. You got to stop thinking so hard. But there was no real difference in my personality. That's what I'm saying. You know, it's like I'm having fun. That's about it. So up comes the turning point. So when we left, when we were done with the casino, the bar closed. We'd usually stay there for like several more hours doing nothing but eating and drinking coffee because we were not drunk, but buzzed. And we did not want to get pulled over for being, you know, so we were sobering up for several hours eating and drinking coffee. Casinos open 24-7. They get the... It's, I love that place. But sometimes when we left, we would stop at a gas station, which was like a 30 second drive from the casino. You know, they had food, you could pick up drinks, you could pick snacks, all that stuff, right? And by this time we're exhausted. So it's just like, okay, even though I've been drinking coffee, I need something to keep me awake. I'm starving. So at this particular time in the story, um, the gas station had a substation. It doesn't have it anymore, but it had one, right? It was open all day, actually all day and all night. But this was five in the morning. We're still awake, still recovering or trying to stay awake. We were hungry. We wanted a sub, okay? So we stopped at this gas station and we go in and the substation is closed. And by closed, I mean they put all the food away, the utensils, the trays, the plates, the freaking condiments, everything. It's all put away. However, when a customer wants a sub and they come in and ask for it, the employees have no choice but to open it back up. Get the condiments out, get the food out, get the trays out, get everything. The guy helping us was obviously pissed, okay? He didn't want to open up the entire substation for two people. Obviously, I mean, nobody does. I don't blame him for being pissed. He's slamming things around. You know, he's, you know, pretend this is a tray. He's freaking slamming things around like, God, freaking stupid customers. I hate customers. I hate my life. He didn't talk like, he didn't talk, but you could tell that's probably what he was thinking. I mean, let's just be clear. He wasn't hiding his irritation one bit. <laughs> now me, I didn't want any part of this any longer, okay? I don't like aggravating people. I don't like annoying people. I don't like pissing people off. So I, I was just like, um, maybe I'll just get one of those ready-made sandwiches. You know, the kind that almost every gas station has just sitting in a cooler near the cashier. So I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll grab one of those and a soda. And my buddy was just all smiles. He's going, no, no, this guy's got this. I'm getting my sub. All right, man. So I walked away. <laughs> you can get food, spit in your food, but I'm not. I'm going to go get a sandwich. <laughs> so at this point, not even a minute later, I got my crappy already made sandwich and a Mountain Dew or something, and I'm going to the cash register. Ugh, I was petting my cat and my nose itches, probably because I have cat hair all over me. Um... So yeah, one minute after, I'm at the cash register, I look over at my buddy and the guy making the sub. The guy, not only was he no longer pissy and throwing things around and slamming things around, no, he was laughing. The guy was laughing, okay? I'm looking, I'm like, how the f*** is he laughing? I mean, he was flipping the f*** out. <laughs> I, I, I love doing that. I'm sorry. He really was. He was flipping the f*** out, and now he was laughing. How? So I got in my car after purchasing my crappy sandwich and soda, and my I wait for my buddy to come back, right? So he comes over, he gets in the car, and I'm just like, dude, what the f*** was that? How did you get him laughing? He was pissed less than like a minute, probably 30 seconds ago. <laughs> and my buddy's like, he just starts laughing. He goes, <laughs> he goes, oh, no, he was easy. He was easy. I, I knew I could turn him around. Expound. 
Okay, I didn't say that because I didn't know the word at the time, but that's pretty much what I said. Expound. Tell me what you mean because I, I'm baffled by this point. He goes, let me explain something to you. Absolutely everybody in this world wants to be friends with everybody, assuming that they know that that person is a good person. I mean, nowadays, everybody seems to not trust anybody, and for a good reason. You know, people have stopped the whole, I trust you until I don't, and I don't trust you until I do. And even then, they still may not trust you. I still feel that hair on my nose. <laughs> Now more so, everybody wants to laugh. Doesn't matter how miserable they are, they want to laugh. Okay, maybe they think they don't want to, maybe they say they don't want to, maybe they're naturally rude because they are so miserable, but they want to laugh because laughing feels good. He goes, but the best way to make someone not only feel good, but laugh and like you is to compliment the shit out of them. I'm like, huh? <laughs> he goes, talk to them like they're a freaking god or goddess and put that in a joking manner, but at the same time telling them why you think they deserve to be on a pedestal. And say it like in a joking way, but not in a I'm being sarcastic kind of way. Say it very upbeat. He goes, here's what I mean. Right after you were just like, oh no, I don't want anything to do with this. And you walked away and I said, oh no, this guy's got this. I apologize. This whole next part, I don't know why, the camera cut off on me. And so this is the next day and I'm like, that whole part was cut off. The rest of it was fine. So I have to do this whole thing over. Where was I? Hold on. Oh, that's right, he was talking to the guy who was working at the substation. So basically, he's like, you're a, you're a master at your profession, aren't you? Yeah, you got like at least 12 girls waiting for you at home. I, I, I know your secret, don't even try to deny it. Oh yeah, you got like at least 12. I said 12, but at least 12. He said by this time, the guy was looking less annoyed, but looking at him like, freaking weirdo. <laughs> He goes, you know how I know that? Because you are a master at your profession. You bring the girls home and you say, oh, honey, do you want a sandwich after sex? You don't have to make me a sandwich. I make you a sandwich. I do this for a job. I do this all day. I am a professional. What do you want? You want a tuna bacon melt? What do you want? A... <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, a meatball sub with mozzarella cheese? Huh? You want? You like meatballs with mar mozzarella? I'll get you that right now. Maybe some Italian bread? Oh, how about a BLT? Extra on the B? Huh? Huh? And so now, the girls are like, wait a minute. I get to have sex and a sandwich? I'm coming back for seconds and thirds. I don't care if he's seeing anybody else. This is the best time I've ever had in my life. <laughs> You have to admit, this is a, I don't know how he came up with it to this day, but it's still, it's still good. So then he goes, so then he tells me about how by the, by the end of him talking, he saw me going to the cash register and the guy was legit laughing, like laughing so hard because obviously he doesn't have 12 girls at home. Obviously he hates his job and it wouldn't benefit him like that, but he could use that phrasing to benefit him. You get my point. He put him on a pedestal in a joking way, but not a sarcastic way. And the guy tells my buddy, dude, thank you so much. I needed this. I was having such a bad night. He goes, so say it in a joking way, but obviously not a sarcastic way, because obviously they don't know you, right? You're just making jokes. You know, they're doing something for you, and you just want to be friendly. This is just downright being friendly, complimenting them. So after that night, that stuck with me. I was working for a long time, trying to be more like that. I was pushing myself to talk to people, even if I didn't know them. Coming up with random things to say. I don't care if I've never met them before. If I'm at the store or something like that, right? Everybody's done this. If you're at the store and you're getting, I don't know, frozen pizza, right? Could be someone walking down the aisle because, you know, frozen section, it's always full of people, right? Just say out loud. Just sort of, just be like, man, I remember when frozen pizza was $2, $2 each. Say it out loud. 
and then look to the person you're near because if they're paying attention and they want to respond, they'll look up at you and go, oh yeah, I know, this is ridiculous, isn't it? Boom, you just made an instant connection with a random stranger you never met in your life. Look how easy that was. And I didn't have to make a joke, I was just talking out loud. Was I talking to that person? Whoever wanted to hear it. <laughs> And if you are making a joke, stop trying so hard. That's the that's everybody's problem. It was my problem. Stop trying so hard. You think your jokes are you are supposed to be hilarious? They don't have to be. They do not have to be hilarious. They could be stupid. So stop thinking so hard. Nowadays, I talk to everybody and I can flirt with pretty much anybody unless the girl scares me. There are girls out there that are like so goddamn pretty. I I clam up. I'm like <gasps> oh my god she is so pretty why am i scared to talk to her she's being so friendly it happens okay if you get like that don't get discouraged everybody still feels that but i'll give you an example by me talking to anybody and flirting with anybody i was at the store recently okay this was not that long ago i was grabbing stuff for tacos i had a basket i had taco shells i had the meat i had the cheese i had the lettuce the taco sauce i'm getting hungry just thinking about it so i was on my way to the cash registers okay and they have a cookie section near the cash registers for anybody who wants to do an impulse buy it works well, on my way by, I noticed this very, very pretty girl working, who worked there, working the cookie section, okay? She was, like, restocking them or whatever. And so I'm like, you know what? I really want to say hi to her. I don't care if I get her number. I don't want anything from her. I just want to say hi, okay? And she had the look on her face like, you know, it's like, oh, another day, another dime. Well, my boss makes $5 for every one of my dimes. So I go and I'm looking at the cookies. I'm looking at them pretty intently. Mm -hmm. And I look at her. I go, hey, excuse me. And she looks at me like <laughs> she was not having a good day or she was just tired of it. I go, you look like your opinion matters. <laughs> now, see, I had a smirk on my face. You look like your opinion matters, putting her on a pedestal, but at the same time in a slight joking manner. So I'll start over. Excuse me. You look like your opinion matters. Should I grab a cookie? <laughs> and I did laugh like that afterwards. But I'm like, but seriously, should I grab a cookie? And by this time, she's, she's so confused. Like, this is so random. She's, so she's going... And she gave a flirtatious look back to me. Did she mean to be flirty or was it meant to be friendly? I don't care. I got a positive reaction. She goes, I mean, you can't go wrong with a cookie. <laughs> and I did a slight point to her like, like, damn right, right? But I looked at her and I go, I knew it. I was right to ask you. So I grabbed a I grabbed a thing of cookies, and we, we shared a slight laugh after I picked up the cookies because I had a big smile on my face after the whole time. I still do, thinking about it. So we shared a slight laugh, and I'm just like, hey, you have a good rest of your day, okay? And she goes, you too, with a big smile on her face. Now, that alone may have been enough to make her day, or at least her next few minutes until she got another rude customer, but I got a good, positive response from her obviously helped to cheer her up which is my main goal so could i have gotten her number who knows maybe she's got a boyfriend maybe she's got a girlfriend maybe she's not interested in me maybe i'm not her type but i can tell you the next time i go to that store and i see her you smile with your lips and just go hey how you doing you know she's gonna give a smile back really happy to see you hi how are you or something like that i don't know how she talks but you know it's not going to be a negative response right unless you do maybe she's having a really bad day that can happen too it's not guaranteed but could i have gotten her number again back to the original question who knows again she may not even be interested but my chances of getting her number were so much better after that encounter with the cookies than it was before. You just don't go up to them and say, hi, you're really pretty, can I get your number? That almost never works. Okay, it does, it does work sometimes, but 
it's good to have a good positive conversation before even bringing something like that up. Simple as that. No guarantees, but your chances are so much better after a good conversation, being friendly, being flirty, at the same time, being funny, right? Now, it doesn't even need to be as complicated as this. If this sounded complicated, don't even worry about it. You'll get there eventually on your own, okay? Because I try to talk to everybody I can. I love talking to people. I love being friendly, okay? But like, say, at work. Not everybody's going to be happy at work. And you may not want to talk to anybody at work. You're miserable too. You hate your job. <laughs> but everybody I see, if I lock eyes with them, I just give them a nod, you know, just... Or... Hey, how you doing? And they're like, oh, not bad. It may not be a positive response. It could be a, I hate my freaking job. <laughs> I hear you, man. I've gotten the most miserable people at work to talk to me, to be friendly. It's so easy. It's easy now, I should say. I really had to work at it. It didn't happen overnight. I was practicing it for at least... I want to say a year or two before I relatively got it down. You can only get better, okay? But I started off by trying to talk to anybody and everybody. Back to my pizza example. When did it, When did frozen pizza get so expensive? I remember when it was $2. Like, a, am I right? Say something people will relate to helps. Oh, I know. It's ridiculous. Seems like you're already good friends, doesn't it? <laughs> Even if it's a two-second conversation. That, that was the end of the conversation. But, boom, easy. I realize at this point I'm being a broken record. So anyway, I hope this helps. Um, if you do have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, do me a favor, like and or subscribe. Well, if you're going to subscribe, do me a favor and like it anyway because it really helps me. Uh, but if you do have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments, and I will try to answer them as accurately as possible. So thank you so much for watching another dating advice, even though I haven't done it in a very long time. But like I said, I was requested to do this, and I realize nowadays, especially after COVID and with people on their phones all the time, people are afraid to talk to each other. At least they're more afraid. There's a lot more people who are more afraid to talk to people. So that's why I decided to make this video. So I love your face, and I hope to see you next time.